Good day, campers. Today we're going to talk about RV power systems, what they are and how they work. While this video is meant for the new RVer, I'm sure there is something in it for everyone. In fact, because there is a lot of information in this video, you may want to come back and re-watch it if you have questions. Be sure to stick around to the end where I'll show you how all three types of power work together. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of this, I would like to thank my bride and a good friend, Butch, for all their help with this video. First thing I want to do is define some of the terms when it comes to power systems in an RV. Let's start with the three main types of power. First is AC, or alternating current. Many just call this electricity. This is the same as the power at your sticks and bricks. Needs to be 115 to 125 volts, 60 hertz. The AC system is protected by circuit breakers. Below or above these voltages, your devices may not work correctly. More below or above these voltages could actually damage them. When troubleshooting problems, always check voltage first. I would recommend using an EMS, electrical management system. This device will protect your RV from damage that can be caused by incoming electrical problems. It will also show you voltage, current measured in amps, and hertz to aid in troubleshooting. AC power can come up from one of three sources. First is shore power. Power. Most RVs have the ability to hook to shore power or the RV park pedestal. Second would be a generator. Generators are optional devices. They can be added by the factory or the owner, and they come in different sizes and types. The first type would be an onboard generator mounted somewhere with outside access. These can be either a 30 amp or a 50 amp generator. It uses a, either a transfer switch, which is usually automatic, 50 or 30 amp, or a plug-in, which would be a 30 amp. That's where you use your shore power cord and plug it into the generator. The other one would be a portable generator, which uses adapters to plug into your shore power cord, generally no bigger than a 30 amp, and your third source is an inverter. Uses onboard house batteries to produce AC. Most RVs are not equipped with an inverter. It can be added to save on how much you need to use your generator. What devices you can operate on an inverter depends a lot on how many batteries you have, the size of the inverter, and whether you have solar to help your batteries last longer. Next is DC. DC is also known as your house batteries and the chargers or converter. Direct current, 12 to 14 volts. The DC system is protected by fuses. Above or below these voltages, some of your devices may not work correctly even more above or below these voltages could damage your devices. When troubleshooting problems, always check voltage first. Batteries can be charged by the converter. I don't know why our RV world calls a charger a converter, but they do. So when you hear the word converter, think charger, not to be confused with an inverter, which we'll talk about later. Or, or solar, or both. Third, and last, is propane. Propane, sometimes called LP, it's a byproduct of the process to refine gasoline. Powers a flame in the water heater, the furnace, and in some refrigerators. Now, let's talk about each of these in more detail, one at a time. AC. Your shore power can come in one of two configurations, either a 50 amp service or a 30 amp service. A 30 amp service is one 120 volt 30 amp leg. 
Because it is only 30 amps of available power, you have to be careful how many large power users you use at once. 50 amp service is two 50 amp, 120 volt legs each. With a 50 amp service, the devices in your RV are split up between the two legs, making it much less important to watch what devices you are using at the same time. When parked at an RV park, AC power will most likely come from shore power or the RV park pedestal. At the pedestal will be either a 30 amp breaker or two 50 amp breakers, depending on which service you have. For the sake of this discussion, the chart will show a 30 amp power service just to keep it simple. You will also have the same thing somewhere inside the RV. There will also be breakers on the output of the generator to protect it. When troubleshooting a problem, check all these breakers after checking voltage. When traveling, the best way to get AC power would be from an inverter. While it's impossible to run your gener while it's possible to run your generator while traveling, an inverter is much more practical. While boondocking, you can get AC power from your generator or your inverter. AC powers things like uh, your air conditioner, fireplace, wall outlets, microwave, refrigerator, and your converter, your battery charger. Let me pause here to talk a little bit about GFCI, Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter Outlets. Most RVs have at least one of these installed in damp locations like the bathroom and or the kitchen. Generally, only one of these outlets will have a reset, so if it trips, it will disable all the outlets in that circuit. You'll need to find the one outlet with the reset, usually in the bathroom, to reset the GFCI circuit. Now let's talk about the devices that use AC power. First, we'll talk about the water heater. There's two types of water heaters. One can use AC while the other cannot. Both need DC to operate. More on that later. Refrigerator. There are three types of refrigerators. Two of them use AC while the third does not. First is your RV style refrigerator. It uses AC power as its primary power and DC for the control board. A residential refrigerator can only use AC power. Your converter, aka your battery charger, charges batteries anytime AC is available. Several other items like your TV, your outlets, your air conditioners, and microwave only work when AC is available. Next, let's talk about DC power, also known as your house batteries. DC power, most things in the RV, it's used for devices that can work with more than one type of power. It also powers things that only use DC power. When on shore power, the converter keeps the batteries charged. When traveling, your tow vehicle can help keep the batteries charged. When boondocking, you will need to run your generator to occasionally charge your batteries. Solar power can help extend how long your batteries last. Your slide out controllers, the hydraulic pump and motors only work on DC. These are very picky about voltage, anything below 12 volts and they become unreliable. Your inverter changes DC to AC so only works on DC. Don't confuse this device with the converter. DC is needed for the control board for devices like the refrigerator and the water heater so that they can work on more than one type of power. The furnace needs propane and DC to operate. The stove and oven needs propane and DC to operate. Last, let's talk about propane. Propane can be either primary or secondary power. Refrigerator. As I said before, there are three types of refrigerators. An RV-style refrigerator 
can use propane if AC is not available, like when traveling or boondocking. The other two types of refrigerators cannot use propane. Water heater. Remember I said before there are two types of water heaters. They both can use propane. In fact, one type only uses propane. The other type uses propane when AC is not available. Your furnace. The furnace uses propane as its primary means to produce heat. It uses DC to run the fan and the control board. Your stove or oven works on propane and needs DC for the lights and the control board. And now we've come to the part where I talk about how all these things work together. Without talking about quality, RVs are actually very versatile and can operate in a wide range of conditions. A number of devices use more than one kind of power. Some even use two types at the same time. You can see that by looking at this chart, the best way to talk about these systems working together is to look at specific devices. First, let's talk about the refrigerator. Of the three types of refrigerators, the RV style is the most versatile because it can operate on AC or propane as long as there's good enough DC available. Second would be the DC type refrigerator The only issue being it needs more DC power. If you have a residential type refrigerator, you'll need an inverter and plenty of battery power when not connected to shore power. So when traveling, the RV refrigerator will use propane and battery. The DC reefer will run on battery and the residential reefer will need an inverter to use battery and when boondocking, the RV style can use propane and battery or AC when running the generator. The DC still uses battery and the residential still needs an inverter, but you can use the generator to charge the batteries or power the refrigerator as required. Next is the water heater. Of the two types of water heaters, the dual AC propane is the most versatile because it can use AC when available or propane when it's not. While the propane only uses propane all the time, both types work, but the dual will save on propane when AC is available. Both types need DC to operate. Next is your furnace. The furnace will work with or without AC because it uses propane and DC all the time. When moondocking, you can charge batteries as required with either generator or solar, so the furnace is available under most any situation. Oven stove. Like the furnace, the oven stove is available under most any situation because it too uses propane and DC. Generator or inverter. Air conditioners and other devices that use OC AC only can be used when boondocking if you run the generator or with enough batteries on an inverter. With the inverter, you will need to use solar or a generator or both to recharge your batteries as required. Now let's sum this all up. The most important power system is DC, your house batteries, because that is the heart of the RV. It's a good idea to have a way to monitor your batteries all the time because low voltage or bad batteries can affect so many parts of the RV. Second is propane, because a number of devices cannot operate without it. Then, of course, is AC, because so many comforts rely on it. So if you boondock a lot, you need a good generator and or an inverter. Thanks for listening, and remember, as always, to like this video so you have it to come back to as needed. I know I've given you a lot of information in this video, but you can easily come back and watch it as many times as you want. Also, check out my other how-to videos and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of the new ones.